Let's dive into how therapy builds resilience and rewires our emotional responses. Right, so how can you as a parent tend to the cries of your baby, right? Notice and what is this going on for them. Because when they cry, when a child cries and you tend to them, it sends you know, back reinforcement that, okay, I have someone here who can protect me. Right? But when they keep on crying, nobody is there to protect them. Eventually, they will stop crying, right? But that's because they've realized that no matter how much I cry and ask for help, nobody's coming. And now how does this then translate when this baby becomes older in terms of relationships, right? They learn from a young age that nobody's coming to save me. I can't rely on anybody, right? And that's what now there's these people with attachment and whatnot. The relationship and attachment that you have at a, at a much older age typically begin from the relationship you have with your parents. And then can you be too old to do therapy? Nah. Regardless, 8, 60, 70. I mean, when you're ready, you're ready, man. Like, you can be 80 and be like, you know what? I, I've i had quite the life, and I feel like I need somebody. I need to talk to somebody about everything that I've just been through and experienced. Right? Yeah. Has this happened to you yet where, like, you have a client, and you work on the client, and then, like, you just have a breakthrough, and it's like, okay. I want to say, like, the person's cured or healed, but you're like, okay, we've, like, we've had this major breakthrough, and, like, you're going to be better with your life. Has that happened yet? <laughs> well, so typically how it goes is I can't say like, yeah, I cured you. Now you're fine. Things get better for folks, right? When after, after a certain period in therapy, they feel like they're not as depressed or down. They have a clearer sense of the things that are happening to them, right? Like be aware. It's like, oh, okay. So, you know, when I go here, when this person said this, this to me, that's why I feel so down, right? I'm not, I now know why it is that I felt, felt down. So things progressively tend to get better. And then, you know, when they're like, okay, I don't feel as, you know, perhaps depressed or I feel like I have the tools now, right? Like, you know, last time when I was talking to her, for example, right? I, instead of like blowing up, I used like an I statement. I said, I feel frustrated when you do this because blah, blah, blah. Right. That's a different way of communicating. And that led to a different outcome. And I have these tools to be able to better communicate how I'm feeling versus feeling as if I always have to yell or I have to like hold a bottle of everything inside. Right. So things get progressively better for folks and they're like, you know what, Kelvin? You know, my life isn't perfect, but I think I can manage it okay. Yes, that's I'm happy for you. I love that for you. That's what I want I would love to hear. That you feel like you can have res you're resilient. Now to be able to kind of uh, respond to these same situations, right, in a different way. So, yeah, you know, kudos to you. Off you go, and if and when you know, perhaps you feel like you want to come back, maybe like you know, get a refresher, or maybe strengthen some things, or you know, talk about something more. If you have more questions, stuff, you can come in. But folks, recognize that no things haven't completely changed, but I feel like I have the tools and strength to be able to respond. How about when like you did a therapy with someone mm -hmm. and like they're still struggling and they say, Hey, you know what? I, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you like, Hey, do you kind of try to influence? Hey, you, you're making progress. You got to, you should keep on going and doing it. Or like, do you follow up from like a month later? Hey, are you ready to come back? Like, you know, in your heart, your mind, like, Hey, this guy needs therapy, right? Or this person needs therapy, but that, I don't want to do it no more. How does that work? Yeah. Sometimes some people may not be there yet. Right. They might not be ready because, Again, therapy is about you and what it is that you need and what it is that you're looking for. And if you feel like maybe you're not in a place right now, right, naturally, one, be harmful for me to force you to do something you don't want to do, right? Because, like, change, I can't make you change. You have to be the one that kind of recognizes what's going on and recognize, okay, I need to do something different, right? I can say, like, I've had sessions where, you know, I've said something to somebody, like, three or four times in the past, right? And then a few weeks later, they come back like, Kelvin, like, today I did this. I mean, I just realized, blah, blah, you know, I just, I just realized that I had, I'd be doing this. And I'm like, I told you that two months ago, bro. So it was like, they weren't ready to actually, like, receive that, right, until maybe they went through it and came to their own realization for it. And I'm just like, okay, and now let's explore more of that. Like, why do you think this happened, right? Because you're ready when you're ready. As far as ethics, you have to make sure, like, you say you have like 10 clients, I think. What do you mean? Like, you have like, like 10 clients right now? 
I was like 16 or 17. 15. Do you have to make sure that like, these clients don't know each other? Um, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I think I know what you're asking. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, for the sake of, uh, what's that called? Conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes I don't know. Yeah, I obviously, know. yeah. Yeah. But if I do find that, you know, they, they do know each other. I mean, I would hope that they don't talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, obviously, it. but yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, speaking of generalities, it's like most people are either positive or they're negative, right? Hmm. Is that from genetics, environment, and can somebody be positive, become negative, or vice versa? What do you mean by positive? Like a negative? positive outlook on life. Like they're waking, mm-hmm. they're in the morning, I'm going to seize a day, mm-hmm. the universe is my oyster. Yeah, yeah. Negative, like the whole world's against me, whatever I do, I'm going to fail at it, you know? Mm-hmm. Even though they're successful in life, right? You know, mm-hmm. I think that's like genetics, environment, just a combination of things. Yeah. So, man, that whole like environment versus genetics debate and stuff, right? And I think we've just come to the conclusion research, right, has shown that it is a mix of both, right? Environment as well as bio. Um, some people, you know, might be predisposed to have a certain, uh, there's some folks that are predisposed maybe to have depression because right? it runs in the family, quote unquote. But if you are in a different environment, right, it's less likely that said uh, depression gene, I don't know if you want to call it that, but it is, um, it will actually manifest itself. So the environment also plays a role in how your genetics also, you know, uh, reveal themselves or show themselves. So. Yeah, life, every, that's what I said. Every individual is unique because you can't say that, oh, this person, because they come from this, they have these genes or whatever in their family, that they're going to end up this way. Well, the environment that they're in also plays a role in how, you know, these genes kind of manifest and show up for themselves. And the individual, too, can say, yeah, I might be having, you know, anxious thoughts, but I'm okay. Right? It might be, you know, that might be like their predisposition for anxiety maybe showing up, but they can still respond differently. So. Two-part question. Sure. When should someone like start reaching out to get therapy? Is it something that they just know eternally? And then how do they go about finding the right therapist for them for themselves? Yeah, man. So when it comes to therapy, sometimes, you know, some people, they know, they know. It's like, I know that you know, I have this issue or this problem for quite a long time. And some people might say, I need to talk to someone about it, right? To kind of help me make sense of what it is that I'm experiencing or going through. And then for other folks, it's like, if you find yourself still kind of repeating certain patterns, right? Certain patterns that are unhelpful to you, right? Or unhealthy, um, but you still don't know why, but you find yourself just in these situations responding this way, right? Then yeah, I might recommend maybe talking to someone to kind of help unpack, maybe make sense of, why some things are happening, right? Just because, one, as human beings, we can't see ourselves, right? Only other people can see. Like, you can only see yourself through a mirror. You, if you were, like, you know, in the jungle somewhere, you wouldn't be able to see yourself, right? And that's the strange beauty of humanity is that we all actually need each other, right? So being able to talk to someone who can reflect back to you, like, you know, you can say, hey, this is my norm, and I went this, and it was like, hold on, pause. I noticed that, this time, you took a different bus than you did last time. What's up with that? Let's talk about that, right? For you, it's normal. But somebody's like, I know that's different. What's, what, what's going on there, right? So talking with somebody in a non-judgmental space right, is helpful to kind of help unpack and be able to actually see ourselves. So we should advice to someone that say they're freshman, sophomore in college, and they're interested in like, doing this as a career. Hmm. What would be your advice to this person? Yeah, well, one, I would say, you know, what's your why? Like, you know, why do you want to go down this path? And two, if you do, you know, know your why, and it's because, you know, you genuinely care about people and you want to help people, I would say do your research into what it is about psychology that makes you tick, right? Because some people are more prone to, yeah, might like, might like psychology, but they might actually like the research side of things, right? Like unpacking the why and how that things work. And the other side of that is people who want to help, right? Use the research that folks like, you know, 
folks like you might, you know, come up with or discover to be able to actually help clients. Just because I had, I've known some people whom they went to school, right, for therapy, got their master's in social work, counseling, what have you, but then they just didn't do it because they're like, after one year, they're like, all right, this ain't for me. They're like, I don't have the bandwidth. 